yeah good morning so please type in the chat box am i audible to all of you just a minute okay. yeah so please type in the chat box is the audio and uh, video clear to all of you yes they are clear right yeah okay fine so in this particular lecture we'll be looking at the concepts of hydrostatic forces and also on uh, buoyancy actually i think the screen is slightly dull just a minute yeah better now okay so this is hydrostatic forces and buoyancy so basically in past lectures we have talked about yeah good morning okay so in the past lectures we were talking about uh, you know pressure and its measurements and also we have talked about fluid and its uh, properties okay so we had got some enough understanding so now we'll see when you place a body inside a fluid so what is the pressure exerted by the fluid on that particular body okay so that's what we'll see in the hydrostatic forces and of course we'll also see in uh, buoyancy the same thing of course but also in buoyancy we'll also st uh, study some detailed analysis of stability of floating bodies actually okay now in, if you see again uh, in this particular lecture we are going to take on this complete hydrostatic forces and also uh, stability of floating bodies actually okay but before we start away go into the new concept let us try to solve some problems on pressure and its measurement okay so which would be helpful to us so in last lecture we have seen the hydrostatic law is ofz or in vector form you can see this is gradient of pressure minus density of x bar is equal to 0 where x bar is body force body force per unit uh, wall x bar is equal to minus g so this is per unit mass of course okay so we have seen this and then we can see we have also seen this is the hydrostatic law basically here hydrostatic law and based on this hydrostatic law we have talked about the pressure variations in different fluids like for example in incompressible fluid it is linear incompressible fluid the pressure variation is linear actually then in case of compressible compressible isothermal fl fluid compressible isothermal fluid isothermal fluid compressible isothermal fluid and of course this is only for ideal gas we have seen so ideal gas if you take that particular fluid as ideal gas we have seen this is exponential exponential and in case of non isothermal case non isothermal compressible fluid you can see in the case of non isothermal compressible fluid you have this power law kind variation okay so this is power law kind variation actually power law kind of variation and we have seen the concept of manometers the evolution of manometers basically with the piezometer then from piezometer if you move forward piezometer to youtube manometers youtube manometers to inclined and inclined to differential tube manometers and in case of differential tube we have seen the inverted tube manometers okay so we have seen the sequence how this you know sequence was built and finally we found out inverted tube manometers are obviously th they are very much advantageous they can measure even low pressure difference and also with high accuracy okay so we have seen those points and yesterday we have solved one numerical question so today before proceeding forward let us solve certain numericals on pressure and its measurement so the first question come on let us solve this in uh, i mean in the last slide i have left this as a homework questions for you so you can see in a chemical reactor 60 meters tall the density of the fluid mixture varies with vertical distance z in meters above the bottom of the reactor according to the relation density is equal to 10.1 times of 1 minus z by 500 plus z by 1000 whole square assuming the mixture to be effectively stationary the magnitude of the pressure difference between bottom and top of the reactor in kilopascals is a dash around of to two decimal places did you all try this question did anyone try this question actually tatia mudit dharmendra shubhash shubhash devak dev kalyani all of you did anyone of you try this question there is a nuclear i mean uh, there is a reactor chemical reactor actually and in this chemical reactor there is a mixture of gases and this mixture of gases is almost like stationary okay so if this mixture is almost stationary then what is the pressure difference between the bottom and top of the containers okay so let us start attempting this first of all if you take this container for example if you take this container 
Now, let us see if you, for example, start your z-axis here. Okay, so this is the z-axis. And let us suppose if this face corresponds to the bottom face is z is equal to 0, the top face is z is equal to 60, obviously, meters. This is also meters. For example, you take this as the zero datum. Okay, so this is, for example, zero. So this is zero actually. So z is equal to zero, and that's z is equal to 60, obviously. Okay, now let us see if this is zero and if this is 60. Can you write the hydrostatic law as, and of course, only gravity is the force, so definitely I can write dp by dz is equal to dp by dz is equal to minus rho times gravity. Correct, we can write this equation. Now, in this equation, basically if you have this mixture of gases, they told you that this mixture is effectively stationary, it means almost this gas is at you know static condition. So, we know that generally if you move along the upper direction, the pressure actually decreases. Okay, now the magnitude of pressure difference between the bottom and the top. Okay, so let us see, this is minus O of G. So, the density of the fluid is also varying with Z. Density of the fluid is not constant. Obviously, you can see as you go up, then definitely density will get lighter and lighter. So, this is what you have here. Okay, so 1 minus Z by 500 plus Z by 1000 whole square is the density variation with Z. So, we can write this equation as dP by dz is equal to minus. Now, density can be written as 10.1 times of 1 minus Z by 500 plus Z by 1000 whole square. So, this is the density into gravity, obviously. Okay, so G times G is what you have. So, dP is equal to minus 10.1 into 1 minus Z by 500 plus Z square by 10 power 6 times G dz actually here. Okay, so this is a variable separable form clearly. If you do integration, let us suppose pressure at the bottom. If you want pressure at the bottom, this is z should be 0 obviously, correct? And if you want pressure at the top, this z should be 60 meters because it's a 60 meter tall reactor. It, they have given you this reactor is actually 60 meter tall. So when you are at z is equal to 0, you will be looking at the pressure of the bottom surface. And similarly, when you are at z is equal to 60, this pressure is p top for example, and this is p bottom. Then you can perform this integration. If you perform this integration, p top minus p bottom this pressure difference between these two locations is minus 10.1 into g g let us take 9.81 into now integration of this value integration of 1 is z minus 1 by 500 so this 500 is here into integration of z is z square by 2 so into 2 comes out here plus integration of this is z cube by 3 times of 10 power 6 within the limits 0 to 60 correct yes or no so this is what you have now if you substitute the limits we have minus 10.1 into 9.81 times you can substitute 60 60 minus 60 square 3600 by 1000 obviously this is 1000 plus z cube so 60 cube 3600 into 60 by 3 into 10 power 6 and when you put z is equal to 0 all these three terms are zeros okay because it's a definite integral so then you can simplify the terms if you simplify this couple of zeros and go and this gives you 3.6 actually here and this gives you you know uh, 20 basically and you can cancel three zeros again so these three zeros can get 10 cube here so 2 into 36 72 72 by 1000 so in a nutshell this calculation gives you 9.81 into 60 minus 3.6 plus this is 36 into 2 is 72 72 by 1000 is 0 0.072 actually this value is in pascals okay so this value is in pascals and final answer you want in kilopascals obviously this value is negative because pressure at the top will be less as compared to pressure at the bottom if you do this calculation let us check 60 into uh, 60 minus actually 3.6 plus 60 minus 3.6 plus 0 0.072 plus 0 0.072 56.472 multiplied with 9.81 into 10.1 actually okay so into 10.1 so minus 5595.3 pascals and if you write this in kilopascals minus 5.595 kilopascals okay so the magnitude of pressure difference between the top and the bottom of the reactor is around 5.595 kilopascals that's it okay
5 point, yeah, minus 5.6, uh, roughly 5.59 or 5.6. Uh, uh, this is in pascals, of course. So if you want the answer in kilopascals, then clearly they have asked in kilopascals around up to two decimal places. So 5.59 is what you can say. 5.59 kilopascals. Did you all understand this question? It's a very simple question, actually. So instead of Z, this density is given in terms of Z. So you have to integrate. But when you are performing this calculation, you have to be a little careful. That's it. Clear? So is this question understandable to each and everyone? Yes or no? Come on, quickly type in the chat box. Yes? Okay. Now, let's go to the next question. So, let us solve this question. An ocean at a depth of 1500 meters and assume bulk modulus of elasticity of seawater as 2070 mega newtons per meter square, actually. Okay. So, practically what happens? Let us suppose if we have ocean. Okay. So, let us suppose you have ocean. There is a free surface, obviously, and whenever you take the fluid layer at this point, because of this weight, let us suppose if oceans are generally very deep, so let us suppose if you have this fluid column or fluid layer at a depth h, then this fluid layer will be subjected to the weight of the fluid which is on the top of that layer, correct? And obviously when h is very large, the weight acting on this particular fluid is very much high so that this fluid layer can actually experience some compressibility effects. Yes or no? So whenever you, you apply certain high load, then definitely because of this high load, this fluid layer can actually experience certain amount of compressibility effects. So therefore, in general, whenever you're doing pressure analysis, even though water is an incompressible liquid, but because of this high pressure difference, it can experience certain compressibility effects. So density actually changes with Z. Okay. So that's why this bulk modulus is given. Bulk modulus is there. Consider the following two cases. First, salt water as incompressible fluid and having a specific weight of 10,015 Newton per meter cube. The intensity of pressure or gauge in the ocean is P1 in mega Newton per meter square. Okay, so at a depth of 1500 meters. Then in the second case, salt water as compressible fluid because of this weight, this experience compressible effects and have specific weight of 10,050 at the free surface. The intensity of pressure in the ocean is P2 in mega Newton per meter square. The ratio of P2 by P1 will be dash. Okay, so in the first case, what they are telling, let us suppose if this Z is, if this H is 1500 meters, for example, 1500 meters, then in the first case, you assume this fluid as incompressible, so you can take the density constant. But in the second case, because of the bulk modulus effects, this fluid is not an incompressible, it is actually a compressible. And in such cases, density will actually change along Z. Yes or no? Let us suppose if I establish coordinate system, for example. So let us suppose if I take this coordinate system at this point. So let us suppose this is Z is equal to 0 and meters and this is z is equal to 1500 or for example you can generally if you take this in the reverse direction it would be easy for you in the calculations let us suppose if you establish the coordinate system here for example okay so z is in this particular direction okay z is in this particular direction so this is z and this is x obviously better so this is the horizon somewhere now clearly this free surface is at z is equal to 0 and this depth is at z is equal to 1500 meters yes or no i can keep z top of, uh, I mean, in the upward or bottom directions, depending upon the minus sign, okay? So if this is the Z direction, then definitely hydrostatic law gets converted to DP by DZ is equal to density of the fluid into gravity, actually, okay? This minus sign will not be there because we have taken Z in the downward direction, okay? So in the downward direction, as Z increases, pressure also increases. So this ratio is always positive. That's why we don't take the minus sign like the previous case. Did you understand, actually? You can choose the z direction in the upward or bottom directions depending upon this plus and minus signs. Understandable till this point? Yes? Okay. So therefore, we have this equation. Now, let us consider the first case where we treat the fluid as incompressible. So first case. Incompressible case. Then definitely density is constant dp is equal to rho f g dz and clearly if you do certain integration okay now at z is equal to 0 this is p atm and at z is equal to uh, you know p1 for example this z is equal to 1500 meters okay so this gives you p1 minus p atm is equal to density of the fluid into gravity they have given specific weight is 10050 clearly so 10,050 into 
1500 okay so this is what you have directly because if you integrate dz z 1500 to 0 so this is the value this value is in pascals obviously okay so this value is in pascals and uh, okay they want in mega pascals okay so let us uh, delete one 10 power 6 actually so anyway if you put mega here then definitely uh, what happens this couple of zeros will go and one two three four points okay so one point double zero five zero into 15 so one point double zero five zero into 15 okay one point double zero five zero into 15 actually so 15 point zero seven five 15.075 mega pascals is the pressure and this is actually gauge and clearly they have asked gauge pressure okay so the intensity of pressure gauge so obviously this p1 p1 is actually 15.075 mega pascals so this is actually the pressure in this case clear so is this equation clear to all of you so first of all please tell me is this value clear it's a simple calculation straight away 15.075 yes of course now let us calculate the second case let us do the second case actually compressible fluid compressible fluid okay so if this is compressible fluid then definitely we have this bulk modulus is equal to dp by d rho by rho actually for the substance so as it we go deeper this dp acting on the layers increase and obviously there it happens certain density variation also okay and what is the hydrostatic law that we have dp by dz is equal to rho z actually in this case so if dp by dz is equal to rho z uh, you know this is what we have dp by dz is equal to uh, rho z now what we can do actually dp by dz can be written as rho times of so what is rho actually uh, e is equal to rho times dp by d rho so this rho can be written as e times d rho by dp into g obviously okay so this is the equation but here you can see one thing we have three differentials dp do and dz directly okay so this you cannot uh, simplify directly because you can see this uh, we have three differentials with respect to pressure density and z in this equation but you can actually at a time solve only two differentials then what we can do is uh, yeah better let us use this equation if you see dp by or dp is equal to e times d rho by rho obviously okay let us do one thing if you multiply dz and also dz here on both sides for example then we know in actual case dp by dz is equal to minus rho g which is e times d rho by rho into 1 by dz actually here so this gives you uh, d density okay so 1 by you, you can see we have uh, you know 1 by rho square dz minus 1 by rho square d rho is equal to okay so minus 1 by rho square d rho is equal to let us suppose if this uh, comes to the left hand side then g by e dz is what you have here correct so this is the differential equation yes or no because you can see the bulk modulus in this from this equation you can write dp is equal to e times of d o divided by o actually so dp by dz if you divide this equation with dz on both sides d dp by dz will give you e into d o by o divided by dz like this so if you shift the terms accordingly you can get this particular variable separable form actually okay now what we can do is here uh, see like this is what you have minus 1 by rho square into minus 1 by rho square into d rho is equal to g by e dz actually here okay so now if you are integrating let us suppose density on the top or uh, let us uh, you know keep the integration as it is okay so let us suppose if you keep the integration as it is okay fine uh, what we can do yeah at z is equal to 0 let us suppose if the density is or not at some z density is rho for example okay so what is the integration of this integration of minus 1 by x square is 1 by x so 1 by rho within the limits rho naught and rho is equal to g by e times z obviously okay so if you perform this integration you'll get this z so please sir again compressible part yeah see here what we are doing is normally this is the equation so in place of this dp by dz is equal to rho z in place of this density using this equation if you replace with the help of this bulk modulus then in this equation we are having three differentials there is change of pressure change of density and change of uh, z all three are coming simultaneously but in a differential equation you can solve at max only two so what we are doing instead of using this equation first of all we are trying to get density variation with respect to z how we can do that we can see e is equal to rho dp by do so this equation implies dp is equal to 
e times of do by rho actually okay so what we have done we have done dp by dz dp by dz obviously here that's what okay so this is dp by dz is equal to e by o do by dz that's what the equation i have written here okay this equation basically got it then this dp by dz i have replaced with minus og fine density variation with respect to z obviously okay now let us see if you can see this 1 by o times of o naught and uh, this density is g by e times of z actually here so 1 by rho minus 1 by o naught is equal to g z by e of course okay so this is g z by uh, e actually in this case then let us see uh, so density is equal to 1 by 1 by o naught plus g z by e so this is the variation of density with respect to uh, z actually here okay, i think uh, this minus sign should not be there no because we have taken this coordinate system in the other way sorry this minus sign should not be there then definitely because we have taken the coordinate system in the downward direction so there comes a minus here obviously so this is minus this is plus so obviously we have uh, 1 by o is equal to there is a minus sign here yes so that's what we have okay so density is equal to 1 by o naught 1 by o naught minus gz by e so this is how density is varying with respect to z obviously okay so with respect to z clear so as z increases this term increases and denominator decreases so density of the fluid will increase obviously because there is a compressibility so in previous question density was varying then why we have not taken effect of bulk modulus in previous question you can see this density variation is directly given in terms of z which here it is not given we want to calculate the variation of density with respect to z using this bulk modulus but in the previous question already taking the effect of compressibility they have directly given you variation of density with z understood in previous question we need not do this because they have already given you the density variation with respect to z directly but in this question it's not given so using bulk modulus we are actually calculating it okay now this is the equation obviously as z increases this uh, density is also increasing because of the pressure now physically if you see now if you apply this hydrostatic law dp by dz is equal to rho z this gives you dp by dz is equal to now density with respect to z you have the expression 1 by 1 by o naught minus g by e times z into g of course okay so you have g obviously this g then dp is equal to g by 1 by o naught minus g z by e bulk modulus into dz okay so this is what you have in the differential terms okay now if you integrate then clearly minus n is not required because we have taken the coordinate system in this particular direction no? z is in this direction no so that's why okay z we have taken in that other direction so we need not take the minus n because of the same logic what we have done for this part okay shivam is this clear why we are not taking minus n because we have taken the z direction in the downward direction clear that's why now you can see in this equation if you integrate let us suppose if the pressure at the top is z is equal to 0 which is p atm and at depth z for example 1500 let us suppose if this is p2 okay now you can integrate this now how the main thing is how do you integrate this let us see p2 minus p atm is equal to okay so p2 minus p atm is equal to g is a constant then integration of this particular term is actually how much the integration of this uh, term is let us suppose if this is constant a minus bz so ln a minus bz divided by this inner derivative okay so the inner derivative is minus g by e okay so this is what you have within the limits 0 to 1500 actually here okay so this is given by 0 to 1500 clearly you can see this g and this g gets cancelled so p2 minus p atm in this case is equal to e times of minus e times of because it's denominator of denominator so minus this bulk modulus into ln when you put z is equal to 1500 you have 1 by rho naught minus g times 1500 by bulk modulus minus or you can write one thing ln of this quantity divided by 1 by o naught minus when you put z is equal to 0 this is e obviously okay so this term will go to 0 second term will go to 0 obviously okay now clearly you can see this value is uh, negative obviously okay this logarithm is going to be negative because numerator is less than denominator negative of negative is positive clearly okay so p2 
minus P ATM, which is actually P2 gauge. Okay, so this is P2, which they have given you. So minus and bulk modulus. So what is bulk modulus? Bulk modulus is actually 2070 mega newtons per meter square. So 2070. Let us calculate this value in mega pascals only. Into now ln. Let us do this conversion. 1 by 0 naught. If you multiply a g and a g here, then 9.81 divided by specific weight rho naught into g is nothing but specific weight at the free surface they have given the specific weight at the free surface is 10050 so 10050 actually 10050 and this value is in 10050 direct uh, newton per meter cube okay fine this is newton per meter cube minus 9.81 into 1500 this is in meters divided by e bulk modulus is 2070 into 10 power 6 so this value divided by this value divided by that again this if you write g here this is like 9.81 by 10050 that's it okay so this is the calculation you have to do little carefully the answer is going to be in megapascals okay so obviously it comes out to be positive clearly because this value is less than this okay so this value is between 0 and 1 so negative of negative will be positive and obviously we know that pressure at location 2 is higher than pressure at location uh, on the free surface okay so if you do this calculation let us do quickly 9.81 divided by 10050 so this value minus minus 9.81 into 1500 divided by into 1500 divided by 2070 into 10 power 6 okay so 2070 into 10 to the power 6 okay so this is the value that we have now logarithm of that okay this value divided by 9.81 divided by 10050 10050 actually okay so this is the value now if you apply logarithm of that value log of this value is minus 0 0.0073 into 2070 2070 actually and of course there is one more minus sign so you can uh, delete the minus sign because of this particular minus okay so 15.130 mega pascals 15.130 mega pascals definitely the answer should come close to 15 because you can see this is around 15.075 even though if you take the compressibility effects fluid it has very high bulk modulus okay so fluid is very this liquid seawater is very close to this uh, you know incompressible fluid so definitely if you can simplify this the answer should come close to this particular 15 uh, something around okay 15 so that's how p2 is equal to 15.130 megapascals is this clear to all of you so why then 1 by o naught because at z is equal to 0 this density is actually o naught no because you can see in this simplification we have this is the expression for density clear that's why did you understand this you can actually simplify this also if you want you can delete one by o naught cancel all over and you can keep uh, e by o naught and all like for example in this calculation initially if you have one by o naught by minus g by 1500 by e and all you can multiply a o naught all over and you can get this denominator to be one obviously okay you can actually simplify this calculation also but anyway directly we have a calculator so we have done this okay practically what you can do here normally when you have this term like ln one by o naught minus g z by e by one by o naught if you have this let us suppose if you multiply numerator and denominator with o naught this becomes one this becomes o naught and this becomes one so this is ln one minus g z o naught by e and you can see this ln one minus g by e times of o naught into g gives you specific weight on the face of this okay this is what you can have also clear even if you use that calculation instead of using this because both are same obviously even if you use this calculation you will get the same answer okay is this question understandable to all the main thing in this question is density is actually changing with z but the direct variation of density with respect to z is not given to you so definitely using bulk modulus we have to calculate what is the variation of density with z that's it clear did you all understand this question because the density variation is not given directly with respect to z so you have to evaluate that that's it but see how many concepts are involved here one is using this bulk modulus concept using this hydrostatic law and again uh, you know taking the effects of specific weight all these things okay yes so 15.13 so now what is what is the thing they are asking you p2 by p1 okay so 
now it's a simple division p2 by p1 is actually 15.130 roughly 15.130 divided by 15.075 so this value will be very close to 1 obviously because it's an encompass water has very high bulk modulus so this value divided by 15.075 okay 1.0036 1.0036 is what you have so let us see they have asked you to nearest integer obviously it is 1 in that case okay because practically you can understand this fluid has very high bulk modulus okay that's what clear this question is actually a easy question the only thing is this part which creates some excess uh, calculate calculation for us that's it but the concept is very uh, nice in this question okay you have to calculate the density variation with z which is this part okay so let us go to the next question one last question before we go for hydrostatic surfaces one last question on this uh, manometers so you can see a manometer like i think these values are not very much visible so this is h1 then this is h2 then this is h3 this is h4 this small gap is h5 and this is h6 h6 okay so this is h6 clear 190.30 kilopascals is the answer coming for this question okay uh, let us check whether what is coming out so all of you tried this question air water and obviously this is mercury it is given here okay did you all try this question how many of you have tried this question so please type in the chat box i think uh, kalyani has tried it then ladani shivam ranjit all of you guys yeah mani shubhashish mudit everyone who is on live basically so please type on chat box have you all tried this attempted this no silence not attempting homework please do attempt some homeworks okay it would be helpful now if you see anyway let us check a multitude manometer using water and mercury is used to measure the pressure of air in the vessel okay so they have asked to measure this pressure in the vessel for the given value of heights h1 is 0 0.4 h2 is 0 0.2 okay whatever till h6 they have given the values the gauge pressure in the vessel is dash so we'll do one thing to identify the pressure here the atmospheric reference is here so we will travel all through these columns like we have done in yesterday's class okay yeah some of you might have tired okay fine good now let us see solution if you again start at this point and travel through all these limbs let us see what we get pa so let us suppose if you take the air density to be very small but anyway if you consider density of air into g into h1 from here pressure at this location and this location will be same because they are on horizontal plane from here to here the change in pressure is plus density of air into g into h1 actually okay plus, plus density of air into g into h1 you reach this point and pressure at this point and pressure at this point is same so obviously even though you take this fluid column that again gets cancelled by this particular small fluid column so pressure at this location and at this location is same now here to here the decrease in the pressure because you are traveling in the upward direction so minus density of this is mercury so density of mercury into g into h2 obviously okay so from this point to this point it is density of mercury into g into h2 is the drop again the pressure at this point since this is a con continuous same fluid so pressure at this point and at this point it will be same because this fluid is a single fluid column so obviously pressure at this location and pressure at this location is same now coming to this part so the liquid is water in this particular region and the length of this region is actually this total is h2 this is h3 so this is h2 minus h3 actually okay so there is a water column of height h2 minus h3 so from this point when you travel towards the downward direction you have plus density of water into g into h2 minus h3 okay then from this point again you reach this point this is again mercury you have so plus density of mercury into g into h3 okay now obviously pressure at this location and at this location is the same clearly and from you here if you travel till this point the pressure at this location due to this part is minus because you're traveling in the upward direction so minus rho g g into h4 okay again this is a single expense so pressure at this location and at this location it is same because of hydrostatics so again from here to this particular point you have the height total height as h4 again so plus density of water into g into h3 
h4 obviously okay so because this length is same as this length so density of water into g into h4 and here also it is water so this is h5 we can do one thing h4 plus h5 okay because you can see the water level is extended up to this point the mercury interface is here so clearly the pressure at this point and at this point will be same and coming to here this is h6 plus h5 so minus density of mercury g h6 plus h5 obviously okay so you have reached this point and obviously pressure at this point is atmospheric pressure so this is p atm local which will be the pressure actually at this particular point p atm local so basically when you travel through different fluid columns you should know how to subtract the pressure how to increase the pressure depending upon your traveling direction and also the magnitudes so is this clear to all of you how i have written this equation so point 4 repeat sir yeah basically at point 4 what happens is once you travel here this pressure is same as this pressure when this mercury column is of height h4 but you are going in the reverse direction so you have minus density of mercury into g into h4 so coming to this point the pressure between these two points is same but now from this point to this particular point because the interface is actually here okay so water mercury interface is here so this length is nothing but this h4 plus this small fluid column this is h5 so h4 plus h5 height of water column is actually coming down so therefore the pressure is summation of density of water into g into h4 plus h5 clear okay so is that point clear to all of you yes so this is the equation okay now if this is the equation we have uh, you know majority of the terms we can go with the things the gauge pressure in the vessel so pa minus patm is what you want so this implies pa minus patm local is equal to okay so pa minus patm local is equal to let us shift the terms we have three terms actually of density of uh, mercury density of water density of air so first of all let us shift density of mercury so density of mercury into so this is negative so if goes to the other side it is positive h6 plus h5 then this term is negative so if it goes to the other time it is positive so plus h4 then after where is mercury this is plus h3 so obviously if it goes minus h3 and this is minus h2 so if it goes to the other side it is plus h2 with a g acceleration due to gravity is also there then density of water again okay so density of water are both positive terms here so minus density of water g into we have h2 minus h3 plus h4 plus h5 no uh, h2 minus h3 plus h4 plus h5 yes correct so h2 minus h3 plus h4 plus h5 actually okay so this is the minus sign obviously because these two are water terms and we have the density of air also minus density of air times g into h1 actually okay so this is what you have now if these are the terms clearly density of water is 1000 and they have given you uh, okay nothing is given so density of mercury let us take 13600 now compared to these two values obviously this value will be very very small as or no because density of air is actually very very less it's almost like 1.2 but density of water is 1000 and compared to mercury this is still much smaller because 13600 it's like mercury is 12600 13600 times highly denser than uh, air obviously so therefore we actually can neglect this calculation neglect this term okay so if you can neglect this then let us see what you have g 9.81 into 13600 times now what is this value h6 what is h6 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 plus or else uh, let us uh, directly write the calculation why to do all these things from h2 to h6 add every value except h3 okay so let us see 0 0.5 plus 0 0.7 1.2 1 1.2 plus 0 0.1 1.3 1.3 1 plus 0 0.5 1.8 1.8 minus 0 0.3 1.5 okay so this value is 1.5 minus density of water 1000 into h2 to h5 with h3 subtraction so 0.5 plus 0 0.4 1.2 1.2 1 1 plus 0 0.1 1.3 minus 0 0.3 so this is 1 actually okay so this value is in pascals obviously and if you strike off these three zeros and if you put a dot here then definitely this answer is going to be in kilopascals okay so let us see 13.6 into 1.5 13.6 into 1.5 so this value minus 1 
नाइनटीन पॉइंट फोर इंटू नाइन पॉइंट एट वन यू हैव वन नाइनटी पॉइंट थ्री वन फोर थ्री वन फोर किलो पास्कल्स ओके सो दैट्स द करेक्ट आंसर एक्चुअली वन नाइनटी पॉइंट थ्री वन फोर किलो पास्कल्स सो दे फॉर द ए प्रेशर इन द टैंक गेज इज इक्वल टू वन नाइनटी पॉइंट थ्री वन फोर किलो पास्कल्स एक्चुअली ओके सो दैट्स वॉट यू हैव द प्रेशर द गेज प्रेशर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर एयर इन द टैंक यूजिंग This manometer. Okay, so 190 point. I have to two decimals. So 190.31. Okay, roughly. Yeah, that's the kilo pascals. Okay, did you all get this answer? Whoever has solved this question, did you all understand this? Basically, have a multi-tube manometer. Okay, so it's a multi-tube manometer actually. So, but the main thing is you should know how to travel through the fluid columns. That's it. So please explain how air neglected. Yes. Why air density is neglected? I'll tell you. See here. Like for example, if you compare these terms, okay, if you compare this term, that first term, first term will give you thirteen thousand six hundred into one point five, correct? Minus, okay. So this is the term. Second term will actually give you thousand. But if you go for this value, let us see how much you will uh, get actually, okay? And these are without g's, okay? So here also, if you don't take g because g we have taken out. Without g, this term is giving you this much value, and second term is giving you this much. But coming to here, density of air is around 1.2, and H1, H1, if you see, H1 value is 0.4 roughly. So 1.2 into 0.4, 0.4, ah uh, sorry, yeah, 0.48 is what you have. Compared to 1000 and this values, this 0.48 will be very less actually. Okay. Understood. Compared to these two values, this value will be very very small. So that's why, because practically density of air is only 1.2 kg per meter cube roughly, but density of water is 1000. Okay, so almost like 970 times large in general. Okay, and this mercury is 13600. That's why. Okay, so this physical insight can actually save some calculations. Even if you do this calculation, if you divide with 1000 for doing kilo pascals, if you divide this with 1000, it do not create any impact. it comes like this so within the first one two decimals it generally don't create much impact okay that's why i have neglected this okay so anyway now let us go to the co concepts of this hydrostatic forces because we have uh, spent some time on questions of this pressure and its measurement okay i hope it's uh, everything is clear so now let us uh, solve this case of hydrostatic forces actually okay now obviously you can see in there are plane surfaces and also curved surfaces so first let us quickly go to plane surfaces then we'll also see the curved surfaces part okay and then we'll again solve certain problems now try to understand one thing in plane surfaces generally let us suppose if this is the free surface of water you generally keep a plate inclined at some angle correct okay? so you keep a plate which is inclined at some angle theta for example okay and when we calculate what are the formulas we write in this chapter all these formulas are valid if you take fluid on one side and if you take air on other side okay so if this is air means here the the other side of this is p atm actually one side it's p atm and one side you have the liquid like this okay this is the case that we take otherwise what happens if you keep a plate a flat plate in a fluid definitely the same amount of force will be acting on both sides and obviously the net amount of force acting on the plate will be zero obviously okay so in order to write all the formulas and all what we are doing is normally this gates for example holding fluid in uh, dams or holding the fluid in containers in all the cases we are doing this plate is having fluid on one side and atmosphere on one side and whatever is the pressure here same is the pressure here for example okay so this is p atm local obviously okay this is also local clear now in this case if you do all your formulas whatever you have they get valid so this is theta obviously okay so this is theta and if you see the area of cross section of this or basically the surface area okay so let us suppose if you take the surface area for example so clear this is surface area for example okay so you can see this two lines are looking you know this is slightly deflected no fine okay now anyway if you have this surface like this the surface is of this shape for example some random shape surface then definitely you know if you try to talk about the pressure variation on this the pressure initially will be uh, small on the topper edges and then 
as we go deep the intensity of the pressure increase and finally the pressure which acts at the bottom will be slightly more than as compared to this pressure and obviously the pressure intensity is like this okay so the pressure intensity is like this now many times you might have solved in strength of materials also in beams and all whenever we have this uniformly varying load then we can actually replace this completely varying load into a single load actually okay passing through the centroid of this diagram you might have seen this right but of course here it is pressure you have to multiply it with area obviously okay so this complete pressure system can be physically represented with a one particular pressure or one particular force actually if you if you write this as the force if you multiply with area at any particular instant and if you write this as force this is the hydrostatic force means this complete pressure distribution or if you multiply with area this is the force distribution along the length of the beam so if this is the force distribution you can replace this complete force distribution with a single force passing through the centroid of this particular pressure diagram as or no in fluid mechanics you might have done this i mean in uh, strength of materials you might have done on a beam if there is a uvl then how to replace the uvl with a single load so how to solve the question about inclined Single column manometer. Okay, uh, I'll put one question. Maybe on tomorrow's session, I'll keep a question on inclined tube manometer and we'll solve that. Okay, because uh, I thought that the type of questions we have solved yesterday and all it could be beneficial, much beneficial. So anyhow, see, inclined tube is very easy. The only difference is, let us suppose if you are having an inclined tube like this. Let us suppose if you have the mercury interface at this point, for example. Okay, then if you have the liquid solid contact, the bottom contact at this point. Then you can see, let us suppose if the mercury is up to this point and this length is L, for example, and if this is theta, angle made with horizontal is theta, then for this L, we have a corresponding capital H actually, okay? So this is H and H is actually equal to L times of sine theta. So how we get the pressure difference? Let us suppose if there is a fluid at location 1 and this is location 2, for example, P, pressure at location 2, for example, P1 is equal to because this is p1 plus p1 plus density of the fluid gh g let us suppose if this length is x for example and there is a fluid and this is mercury actually okay so manometric fluid then what we can do is actually this p plus o f g x is equal to p2 plus this length will actually corresponds to only a pressure difference of g into L sine theta that's it because it doesn't matter what is the length but actually what is the vertical separation between these two points okay for calculation of pressure difference what is the vertical separation between this point and this point the vertical separation between these two points is only h which is given by L sine theta so here instead of multiplying this L you have to actually multiply L sine theta because of hydrostatic law again I told you it the concept behind this inclined tube manometers if you take three points like this measuring these two is less accurate as compared to measuring these two but actually pressure between these two is same okay so using this simple funda we can use this inclined tube manometers okay clear shubhashish ghosh yeah shubhashish ghosh please tell me is this clear okay now let us come to this uh, picture actually okay anyway this is a simple fundamental concept but anyway so let us see if you have this then if you define a coordinate system passing something like this and also this is horizon for example okay so let us suppose if you take this as or maybe this as horizon if you establish a coordinate system passing through this point like this and also clearly like this okay so you can see this is x and this is y for example here then on this top if you see let us suppose if this is the centroid this is centroid center of gravity and if this point if you project let us suppose you have cp here okay this is center of pressure then when you project these points onto this surface for example say like this and clearly if you have this lens you can actually write this particular distance as h star or h bar for example this h bar depth of centroid from free surface and this is called h star obviously okay so this is h star and clearly you can see if you define an axis like this here okay so let us suppose if you define an axis something like this okay so for example say this is y and this is x because generally that's the normal nomenclature so if this is x y then you can see this axis if you take as x x which is passing through the centroid actually then the relation for all these things can be written by f is equal to 
density of the fluid which is here density of the fluid which is in this case into g into area into h bar actually okay which means basically if you identify the centroid okay and if you see the depth of centroid from the free surface obviously the gauge pressure at this point is density of fluid into g into h bar so density of the fluid into g into h bar for example if you write here into area this area is the total area of the plate so the hydrostatic force which is acting is nothing but pressure acting at the centroidal depth multiplied with area this is actually very simple if you see if you identify look i can easily show you with a simple one two minutes if you take some location here the pressure acting at this point and means basically correspondingly you have a da let us suppose somewhere here for example okay so let us suppose if this is da some part of the uh, surface now at this point if you write the small equilibrium at that particular small point of the plate you have patm acting in the direction and in this direction the force you have is patm local plus density of fluid into g into h let us suppose if this is some random height h okay so this is some random height h for example now if this is h the pressure acting at this point is nothing but patm plus o f g h and in the reverse direction also there is a pressure of patm because we assume that on one side of this plate there is fluid and on one side there is atmosphere okay so that's what we have and this area on which this pressure is acting is basically da like this okay so there is a small area which is da so if you see the net force acting on this net force sigma f sigma df let us say for example or df let us put df is equal to patm local plus rho g h into da this is acting in the downward direction to in the normal direction minus this is acting in the upward direction so patm local into da obviously here okay then you can clearly see this term and this term gets cancelled this term when you multiply with da it gets cancelled with this so the small elemental force is equal to rho fluid g h da if you want the total force you have to integrate this over the complete area yes or no this analysis you have done only for small area if you do complete analysis then that's what you have now let us suppose if you take density of the fluid is constant in general so rho f g into you all know integration h da what does this gives you over the complete area a this is nothing but area into h bar that's it like for example you see integral x da is area into x bar integral y da is area into y bar similarly here this is a into h bar and this is same as this simple integration okay just force balance okay and if you do the momentum balance like about this particular axis o for example if you call this point o and if you do the momentum balance like it's a common principle in engineering mechanics if you want to replace a force system with a single force then definitely the total moment generated by this complete force distribution about this point should be equal to moment generated by this f according to about this point o okay if you want to replace a force system how will you replace about a particular fixed point whatever this complete force system is generating some moment the single point load should be placed at such a point where the momentum is uh, where the moment is again same and also magnitude of the single point load should be same as magnitude of the complete distributed load okay so like this using these two points you will replace similarly if you do you can get this and this h star actually if you do single moment of integration you can clearly get this as i x x g sin square theta by area into h bar this is also a very simple calculation again but right now i'm not showing again uh, you have to go for certain integration and all now you can see whenever you apply this distribution of moments about this point o the same moment should be done by this f and obviously if you use little trigonometry you can get this expression i x x g and what is i x x g this moment of inertia of this area about this axis xx and this axis should pass to the centroid actually okay so that's what we have this is the expression okay and using this we can calculate for rectangles triangles whatever the geometries they give you you know the moment of inertia values so you can easily calculate okay so in mechanics you might have seen this engineering mechanics like triangle for example if you have this triangle let us suppose if this is the centroid g then the moment of inertia about this axis xx okay so you can see this is xx for example so i xx g in this case is b h cube by 36 obviously okay using parallel axis theorem you can calculate at any angle and what is b and h obviously this length oh sorry this length is b and obviously this is h clearly okay this is h obviously okay so that's h and b similarly for cuboid i mean for the cube 
sorry, for a rectangle, for a triangle, for a circle, you can see whatever the values you want, you can calculate. Okay, I'm leaving that particular part for you. So you can substitute this, for example, for a triangle. You can see h star is equal to h bar plus i x x. About this axis is b h cube by 36 sin square theta. Now depending on whatever is the inclination theta divided by area half into b h into h bar. So what is h bar actually for this particular centroid from top surface? Let us suppose if this is the top surface here, then this will be at a depth of 2 h by 3 obviously. Okay, so this is 2 h by 3. So this is what you can do in this case. Okay, but this formula is applicable only uh, when this tip is touching the free surface okay otherwise this h bar is not 2h by 3 okay so h bar cannot be 2h by 3 because if let us suppose if the free surface is somewhat higher then definitely centered will be at a depth more than 2h by 3 okay so that's what basically you can do all these uh, calculations for example let us keep this as h bar only h bar actually okay so then you can see this uh, 2 can cancel this 18 times this b h can cancel this h square times okay so h star is equal to h bar plus h square sin square theta by 18 h bar that's it okay so you can see and one very important point that you can show here is normally if you have the concept of product of inertia you can see these two points will lie on the same line actually okay means there is no separation in x between these two points actually okay so these two points always center of pressure and center of gravity uh, this uh, centroid will lie uh, uh, will lie uh, below each other okay like for example center of pressure always lies below the center of gravity but in the same line okay and now coming to the case of multi-layered fluids, sometimes what happens, the complete plate need not be in the same, uh, you know, in, in the same location, okay, means the complete plate need not be in the same, uh, you know, uh, what, what we can say, in the same fluid, okay, so like for some part of the fluid, the fluid can be something different, for other part of the plate, the fluid can be something different, like for example, you can see the case of multi-layered fluids, multi-layered fluids. Okay, so in case of this multi-layered fluids, for example, like you can see, for example, let us suppose you have a plate like this, and this plate is corresponding to certain so you can see if this is the area, for example. Okay, so if this is the area actually here, then you can see some part of this may be in some fluid, maybe till here. Let us suppose if this is some fluid, so fluid over one, and from here, let us suppose the fluid can be something different actually. Okay, so this is the interface actually, and from here, the fluid can be something different like this of density rho 2 actually. Okay, so if this is rho 1 and if this is rho 2 in actual case. Okay, now how we actually calculate is the same logic will hold, but the only one existing is this for this part of the plate which is here. For this part of the plate, here the pressure is still PATM, but the pressure at this interface means the start starting of the second point is or the starting of the second fluid is not at PATM. Yes or no? So this particular layer is not at PATM. So basically, what we do is there are two ways to do this to calculate the force distribution on this means basically you can see the pressure variation you can see this slope will sorry this slope will be something different you can see this could be the pressure variation actually this slope could be something different and from this particular point, the slope could be something, you know, other thing actually, okay, like for example, you can see, this could be some other slope, okay, so you can see, it's like, uh, you know, this slope could be something different actually, which is acting on this particular part, okay. So this is how you can have. So if you can have this multi-layered fluid, like for some part of the plate it's in one fluid and for some other part it's in another fluid, you can do it in two ways. First thing is, you can, since the pressure at this interface is PI, 
the gauge pressure corresponding to pi is nothing but pi is equal to rho 2 g into some arbitrary height let us say for example x so what we do in analyzing this part we will assume this as a plate inclined at to this horizontal at an angle theta with this amount of means you will actually construct an ideal or imaginary fluid column of height x and you will do this analysis same as this part but instead of having the fluid here you will actually elevate this to a height x and then you will start measuring h bar from that particular location or in another way you can also do this as let us suppose for this part of the plate if the centroid is here g1 and for this part of the plate if the centroid is here g2 so what you can do is let us suppose if this is at a height of h1 bar for example and for this let us suppose if the height is h2 bar from this free surface okay so this is h2 bar actually in this case now pressure at this particular location p c1 for example and pressure at this location p c2 obviously you can calculate the pressure at this location p atm plus rho 1 g let us suppose if this length of the fluid column is for example capital h1 then p atm plus rho 1 g capital h1 plus you can identify what is this h2 bar actually from the face surface or basically this separation so you can calculate this as net force acting is equal to p c1 into area of the first part of the fluid let us suppose if this is up to this part so this value is a1 for example so this is a1 and this part of the area is a2 for example and total area is a1 plus a2 then clearly you can write this as pressure acting at the centroid of the first part into a1 plus pressure acting at the centroid of 2 into a2 this is actually the total force which is acting on this particular part clear to all of you did you all understand how to calculate the pressure or calculate the total force acting in case of a multi-layered fluid everyone please type in the chat box is this clear to all of you pressures acting at this centroid into area of that first part of the fluid and pressure acting at the centroid of the second part in this multi-layered into a2 clear but when you are writing pressure at this point obviously you know how to write so g1 g2 are separate center of gravity is, yes these two are separate this is for first part of the fluid i mean first part of the area which is in fluid one and this is for second part of the fluid which is in uh, you know fluid two second part of the area which is in fluid two correct okay and if you want to calculate common center of pressure how do you calculate clearly you know like for this part on the upper part if you want to replace with a single force system you will replace something like this yes or no so you will replace something like this and for this part for the second part you know you will replace something like this actually okay so you will replace something like this so let us suppose if this is f1 and this is f2 for example now clearly you will you can identify the location of this h1 star and also this h2 star so you have two points this is a parallel force system so if you want to replace this you will actually keep somewhere in between with you know the moments actually like for example f total into h star should be same as f1 h1 star plus f2 h2 star all this simple engineering mechanics principles will actually help you in calculating what is h star okay do you know how to calculate this each and every one of you okay this is the case of a multi-layered fluid Sometimes you can have three, four fluids also, but uh, anyway, in gate examination, maximum they can go up to two because calculations wise, time increases. That's it. Okay. Is this clear to all of you? Did you all understand how to do this? Okay. Now. Let us see, uh, before going to this uh, curved surfaces, let us solve one question on this plane surfaces. Okay, it would be helpful. So, this is actually a question from the plane surface. So, see here. We'll, yeah, one numerical. This is what we are doing. So, see here. Gate AB of dimensions 0.6 by 0.9 meters 
is located at the bottom of a tank filled with methyl alcohol where specific gravity is 0.79 okay so this is a methyl alcohol tank okay so 0.79 is the specific gravity and hinged along its bottom edge a so this is a hinge actually at this location a obviously okay so this is the gate that is here okay now let us see knowing that the weight of the gate is 300 newtons so weight of the gate is given so weight of the gate is actually 300 newtons okay so weight of the gate is 300 newtons the minimum force that must be applied to the cable bcd so this is a cable b c d actually so what is the force you can see clearly there is a force which is applied on this cable actually applied to open the gate is dash look clearly if you see the physics there is weight which is acting here and obviously this hydrostatic force will also be acting at some point like this yes or no so this hydrostatic force will also be acting so clearly you can see one thing this total configuration will actually try to rotate this gate about this point O, okay, in the clockwise direction. Now, when you apply this force on the string, on the cable, what this cable do, if this is force F, definitely this is also force F, okay. Let us call this FH, hydrostatic force. Now, if this is F, this F is trying to open the gate by rotating this gate in the anti-clockwise direction. These two are trying to put this gate in the clockwise direction, okay. So, therefore, you can see this gate at some particular value of force f this gate will definitely open wins at this particular value of f what happens this gate will start rotating about this point o i mean point a actually and the gate opens correct so they are asking you what is the force that you should apply to open this gate okay but here there is certain fluid of height point three uh, you know what is this point three actually uh, point three point eight so what is this point three and point eight Okay, this distance is 0.8 and obviously, okay, this distance to the pulley. Okay, so this is the distance to the pulley actually. Okay, fine. So this height is, uh, the pulley is at, the center of the pulley is at a height of 0.3 meters from this, uh, you know, uh, free water surface. Okay, so this is the free ethyl alcohol surface. Now, let us try to solve this question. Your main point is, what should be the force F you should apply? Since this is a single cable, if force F is here, similarly force F is also here. So let us start with the free body diagram. C. There is a gate like this, there is a gate like this, okay, and water surface, uh, ethyl alcohol surface, methyl alcohol surface is actually here, okay. So this is the methyl alcohol surface and let us say this angle is theta, for example. This angle is theta, which we don't know as of now. This angle is theta, okay. Now, you can understand one thing, this is F, can anyone tell me why this is F actually? why this f is actually given here why this dimensions are given can anyone tell me why these dimensions are given why these dimensions are given is this mandatory is this compulsory that this string is normal to this plate to take moment of course we understand but is this mandatory or is it compulsory that this f is actually exactly perpendicular to this gate can we say that is this f is exactly perpendicular to this plate please tell me can we say that is, is it mandatory that this f should be perpendicular to this plate no obviously it need not be right so let us see if this is f we have to calculate this angle theta so that we can actually resolve this f cos uh, you know uh, basically whatever you can say this is like f cos theta and maybe f sin theta something like this we can resolve okay so fine anyway let us see right now this angle uh, for calculating this angle also we have the dimensions so this is 0.8 up to this particular point this is 0.8 okay and this is 0.6 again so we have this angle theta for example or let us do one thing if you call this alpha better okay so you call this angle alpha it would be fine so f on this gate you can see there is a force f acting at an angle alpha obviously okay so with this plate it is angle acting at an angle alpha for example and obviously this plate is at an angle theta okay so this plate is at an angle theta because if this is theta that's also theta okay now the hydrostatic force will also be acting at some location the weight weight of the plate will be acting to the centroid so let us suppose if this is weight of the plate actually here so this is w and hydrostatic force will be normal to this plate clearly so this is a hydrostatic force which is acting okay we'll calculate what is h star all these things we'll calculate so this is 
hydrostatic force fh okay so hydrostatic force fh now if this is the point o then let us try to understand certain things actually if this is alpha what i can do is i can resolve this along if for example this is the force f which you are applying and if this angle is alpha then clearly try to understand this is f cos alpha this is f cos alpha actually here okay so this is f cos alpha and this will be f sin alpha which is exactly perpendicular to the plate yes or no so this value will be f sin alpha and this will be f cos alpha actually and here there is a hinge so you also have the reactions rx ry anyway rx and ry is the hinge reactions so this f cos alpha and f sin alpha similarly if this angle between the plate and this horizontal is theta this angle between the plate and vertical is actually 90 minus theta which you know correct so you can see if you resolve this we can have this as w cos 90 minus theta and this is w sin 90 minus theta obviously okay so weight can also be resolved into two perpendicular components one is basically if this angle is theta this angle is 90 minus theta so w cos 90 minus theta this is w sin theta and this is w cos theta clearly and this fh will be anyhow normal to this plate okay now here you can understand one thing this f cos alpha and w sin theta are again passing through this point a actually here correct now here if you see total we have six components one two three four five six seven total you have seven components two reactions one hydrostatic force two components of weight and two components of this f actually seven components out of these seven components you can clearly see four components will contribute to zero moment actually this reactions rx and ry will pass to this point a and for this opening the gate should rotate about this point o so clearly in this rx ry w sin theta and f cos alpha will not contribute anything for the rotation yes or no clear can i say this these four components will not contribute anything for the rotation actually yes or no yes now let us see if you write the moments for example let us call this as a and let us call this as b for example and obviously let us call this as c c so you understand there are three normal forces to the plate sir clear now you are look we have resolved this into perpendicular and passing through the plate similarly weight also we have resolved perpendicular and normal to the plate and this f will be f h hydrostatic force will be anyhow normal okay so out of total seven forces acting on this plate four forces rotation wala repeat ka dijiye yeah if you want this gate to get repeated about this point o then the force should exert certain moment about this point yes or no but out of this total seven forces this reaction at x in the in the x direction reaction in the y direction this w sin theta and also f cos alpha all these things are passing through this particular point a so these four forces will not contribute for the rotation of this plate about this point a yes or no because all these four forces are passing through the moment center a actually okay now you have the normal components what are they this is fh w cos theta and f sin alpha clearly we know this fh and w cos theta will try to produce a clockwise moment about this point a but this f sin alpha will produce a anti clockwise moment obviously okay then let us see if you this is the free body diagram in this case so if this is free body diagram you can see fh into a hydrostatic force into a plus w cos theta w cos theta into b this should be balanced by f sin alpha into c that's it now in this equation the things that you don't know what are the things that you don't know is you don't know what is this fh you don't know what is this a you don't know what is this theta you don't know what is b you don't know what is f sin alpha and c okay there are some unknowns you have to work out through your fluid mechanics knowledge to calculate those values okay so let us see first of all hydrostatic force fh so what is the magnitude of fh actually here that's what you have to calculate look in this plate look let me write only the things which are required here so let us suppose if this is point a here and let us see there is certain hydrostatic force which is acting like this okay at this point normal to the plate clear now you can see if this is fh 
centroid you can see this is 0.6 meters this is 0.6 meters actually and what about this they have given you the plate gate AB is 0.6 by 0.9 meters is located at the bottom of the tank so if this is 0.6 then clearly this length is actually 0.9 correct it's not the width is it width they have given you the width of the gate is 0 0.9 this is 0 0.6 obviously and that's 0 0.9 okay this is 0 0.8 so this is 0 0.8 meters clearly so if this is 0 0.8 you can actually calculate this length. So what about this length of the plate actually? So this is 0.8 here, okay? 0.9 is the width of the gate. This is width. Width of gate is 0.9 meters. Fine. Now, this is 0.8 and this height is 0.6. So clearly, if you see this length, let us see what is this length. Obviously, it's 1 meter, correct? So 0.36 plus 0.64 is 1. So square root of 1 is 1. It's a 1 meter length gate. Yes or no? The length of the gate is actually 1 meter, correct? Because this height is 0 0.6 and this separation is 0 0.8 actually. So clearly 0 0.8 square plus point, uh, you know, this is 0 0.8. Guys, just a minute. Point, I think this is 0 0.8, correct? Right? These two are at same location. Just let me move and check. No. This is 0 0.8 here. This 0 0.8 is only for this point, okay? So this point of interface. And this point is towards right. Okay, fine. Then this cannot be 0.8. It's not a 1 meter plate. Okay, so fine. This is 0.3 and 0.4. Width of the plate is given. Width of the plate. It's a 0.6 by 0.9. So one of this should be length, correct? Okay? So if this is 0.9, then width is also 0.6. Let us not take this. Width is 0.6 meters. Okay, because you can see th this is uh, width by length actually. Okay, otherwise you cannot see if this is 0.6 and if this is 0.9, then this length you can calculate depending upon the calculation again. So this theta can also be calculated easily. Okay, with the horizontal, right? Because you can see one thing clearly: this cannot be 0.9 because this total is 0.8, so this cannot be 0.9 and this is already 0 0.6, so this cannot be 0 0.6, obviously, because if this two are perpendicular, so definitely this has to be the 0 0.9, the other dimension of the plate. Yes? Yes or no? Look, this 0 0.8 is not same as this 0 0.8, okay, because this point is to the right side of this 0 0.8. Clear? This point A is actually to the right side of, uh, right side of this 0 0.8, actually. And this is given 0 0.3. I think the diagram was not done very clearly actually with the you know I think the DTP has misunderstood some things. What is this point three that the pulley distance? Okay, so the pulley distance and this is point eight, so fine. Then theta is equal to something. Okay, so this is point nine. The reason for this is look why this is point nine? Because if this is point six, then again this length of the plate cannot be point six, obviously. Okay, so Therefore, 0 0.6 is actually the width and 0 0.9 is actually the length of the plate. Okay, so this is 0 0.9 and width is 0.6 meters. Is this clear to all of you till this point? Yes or no? So please type in the chat box. Is this clear to each and every one of you? If this is 0.6, then this is 0 0.9 obviously because the plate dimensions is given and clearly for this as a 0 0.6, this length, this hypotenuse cannot be 0 0.6. So 0 0.9 is actually the length of the plate. Okay. Now, if 0 0.9 is actually the length of the plate, then again you can calculate theta. So, if length is 0 0.9, if this length is 0 0.9, clearly you can see one thing. This is C is nothing but length of the plate. So, C value is 0 0.9 meters. Okay, so C is 0 0.9 meters. Then, if C is 0 0.9 meters, what about this angle theta? Theta is equal to sine inverse you know 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.9 so 2 divided by 3 actually okay so sine inverse 2 by 3 let us check 2 by 3 sine inverse okay degrees so sine inverse if you check this sine inverse 41.81 so theta is 41.81 degrees actually okay so theta is 41.81 degrees now if theta is 41.81 so theta is 41.81 we came to know theta if c is actually 0.9 B is actually half of C, correct? B is just a half of C actually. 
so b is equal to 0.45 meters so we identified c we identified b w is given cost theta can be calculated then y has to be calculated f h has to be calculated and this sin alpha has to be calculated alpha can be easily found out c this angle you have taken as alpha clearly right so this angle is alpha and what about this angle actually you can calculate this angle no if you calculate this angle then this is theta better do one thing so let us instead of taking because this angle is not 90 correct so this angle is not 90 so if this angle is not 90 first of all let us calculate this angle this angle is 0 0.4 by 0 0.8 so 1 by tan theta is equal to 1 by 2 so let us suppose if this angle is for example if this angle is alpha so let us calculate how we can calculate this angle okay so with vertical the angle made by this is 90 minus alpha but you know this plate is inclined at some angle so 0 0.4 by 0 0.8 so let us suppose if you call this as alpha let us suppose this is beta let us work with little trigonometry tan beta is equal to 1 by 2 obviously okay so this angle is 90 minus beta obviously okay so this angle is 90 minus beta so we have to calculate the inclination of this with respect to this plate okay so use little trigonometry that we can get tan beta is actually 0 0.4 by 0.8 which is 1 by 2 okay so this angle is 90 minus beta and you know one thing that this angle is theta again okay so this angle is theta which means this small angle is actually alpha minus theta yes or no so this small angle is alpha minus theta so this alpha minus theta should be same as beta again yes or no because these two lines are horizontal and this is a transversal so 90 minus theta and beta should be same obviously okay so 90 minus theta should be equal to uh, beta of sorry alpha minus theta should be equal to alpha minus theta should be same as beta obviously and alpha is equal to theta plus beta beta is tan inverse of 1 by 2 obviously okay so alpha is actually equal to 41.81 plus tan inverse 0 0.5 if you calculate 0 0.5 tan inverse so 26.565 26.565 is what you have okay so 26.565 actually plus 41.81 okay so plus 2 by 3 sine inverse okay so 41.81 if you do 68.375 degrees alpha is equal to 68.375 degrees 375 degrees a bit of technometry has to be done okay that's it so alpha value is 68.375 degrees so please repeat yeah if this plate is inclined at an angle theta with horizontal then definitely you can see if you write a horizontal again then this angle made by the plate with the horizontal is again theta yes or no because if this is theta with horizontal this plane will again make an angle theta actually okay and if this total angle you have taken as alpha then if this part is theta then the upper part means basically this small angle which is on the top will be alpha minus theta but since these two are parallel lines and here there is a transversal if this is beta this alpha minus theta should also be same as beta that's it okay so did you understand this have we got this basic trigonometry that's it okay we have to work out with some small basic trigonometry we can get the answers okay but if you solve one two questions of this kind every concept will become clear okay so this alpha minus theta is beta so alpha is around 68.375 degrees okay so let us see this alpha is how much 68.375 degrees 375 degrees okay so we can calculate this sine alpha also see also we have calculated now only thing is about this hydrostatic force till now we did not use any fluid mechanics concepts we have just calculated using this trigonometry different angles and sides that's it okay now coming to the hydrostatic force now let me erase this diagram for a while because we got all our angles what we need now let us see how do we calculate this angles okay so oh sorry this side is how much is this we have calculated 0. Point, uh, you know this is 0. 0.9 okay 0. 0.9 meters fine okay then let us see this length is 0. 0.9 obviously width is 0. 0.6 meters clearly then let us see this free water surface is at a depth of 0. 0.4 from this flat plate okay and this angle is theta clearly so h bar actually okay so you know at 0. 0.45 meters if this is 0. 0.9 at 0. 0.45 we have the centroid 
So what is this corresponding length obviously okay so which means this length. So what is this length again if this is total 0 0.6 obviously if you do the projection this half will be 0 0.3 so 0 0.3 and this is 0 0.4 obviously it is given so the centroid will be at a depth of 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4 total 0 0.7 meters as yes or no. So the depth of centroid from the free surface is 0 0.7 meters yes is this clear because this 0.9 of total will project to 0.6 so this 0.45 will project to 0.3 similar to angles that's it okay so this h bar is actually at a depth of 0.3 and this 0.3 plus 0.4 total 0.7 meters is the depth of the centroid of the fluid uh, centroid of the plate from the free surface actually okay so 0 0.7 so f h hydrostatic force is equal to density of the fluid so specific gravity is given 0.79 so 790 kg per meter cube rho g 9.81 actually okay so 9.81 into area of the plate so 0 0.9 into 0 0.6 so 0 0.54 into h bar so this is 0 0.7 okay so this is in newtons actually so if you simplify this 790 790 into 9.81 into into 0 0.54 into 0 0.7 0 0.54 into 0 0.7 actually okay so 2929.46 2929.46 newtons okay so we have also calculated the hydrostatic force now the only thing is you have to calculate what is the depth of center of pressure actually okay so for calculating depth yes 2929.46 okay so that's what we have as the value here now let us calculate the center depth of center of pressure so how do you calculate the center of pressure actually h star for example if you can calculate h star then definitely you can calculate what is this uh, particular uh, small a also okay so let us suppose if this is the a we have taken if this is a okay so let us see we can easily calculate this because if you can identify this length if you apply trigonometry this a is nothing but this opposite side by sin theta correct so you can do that now how to calculate this h star that's what you have h star is equal to h bar plus i x x sin square theta divided by area into h bar correct so h bar is 0 0.7 we have calculated so 0 0.7 plus moment of inertia of this plate if this is 0 0.9 width is 0 0.6 you can see we have this particular configuration where length is 0 0.9 0 0.9 meters and this width is 0 0.6 meters actually okay so this is 0 0.6 meters and clearly here you can see this is the centroid g at this point okay so if you take the moment of inertia about this axis clearly because length dimension is what you have so 0 0.6 into 0 0.9 cube by 12 into 0 0.6 into 0 0.9 into sine square theta so sine square what is this value of theta the plate is inclined at an angle of 41.81 degrees so sine square 41.81 degrees by h bar which is 0 0.7 so you can calculate the depth which is equal to h star in meters so basically to calculate these two terms you need the knowledge of fluid mechanics so we actually calculate the total fluids part so h star is equal to now let us uh, see what we have 0 0.6 and 0 0.9 cancel this 0 0.9 square obviously so let us compute this calculation sin 41.81 or 2 by 3 uh, sine okay so sine of this uh, value sorry uh, sin 41.81 right okay 41.81 sine of that value okay so 2 by 3 obviously so square of this so 0.4444 is what you have multiplied with 0.9 square so multiplied with 0.9 square actually okay so divided by 12 into 0 0.7 is 8.4 correct because 12 sevens are 84 so 8.4 so divided with 8.4 okay so this is what you have plus 0 0.7 so 0 0.743 roughly so 0 0.743 meters is what you have yes or no 0.743 yeah 0.742 0 0.743 whatever very close yes or no please type in the chat box because obviously this is same as 0 0.7 plus 0 0.9 square into then sin square of 41.80 sin 41.80 is nothing but 0 0.6 by 0 0.9 actually so 2 by 3 so 4 by 9 is what you have divided by 12 into 0 0.7 is what you have actually okay so obviously this 9 will cancel 
uh, this one time 0 0.1 into 0 0.9 all these things you can do and finally you can get this value which is equal to 0 0.743 meters correct now when you get 0 0.743 try to understand one thing this depth is 0 0.743 okay now if this depth is 0 0.743 what is this depth look this total is 1 0 0.4 plus 0 0.6 it is 1 that means this height is nothing but 1 minus 0 0.743 correct so this is 1 minus 0 0.743 so subtract this from 1 it gives you 0.257 so if this is 0.257 meters then clearly the slant length is actually how much sin theta division to this value yes or no so the slant length a is equal to a is equal to 1 minus h star divided by sin theta yes or no that's what you have a which if you simplify so you can see 1 minus of this is this value divided by sin 41.81 which is 2 by 3 so divided by 2 by 3 of course okay so 0.3857 so a is 0.3857 meters actually okay so 0.3857 meters is what you have clear 0.385 is the slant height yes obviously the slant height is 0.3857 or 386 roughly so you got all the values you got a you got w sin theta everything you know so only unknown is f in this equation so if you calculate we'll get f actually see the size of the problem is very small hardly took one board okay but there are a lot of understandings and technometry involved in this particular question. First of all, F need not be perpendicular to the plate. Okay, cable need not be perpendicular to the plate. Second thing, calculation of hydrostatic forces using lot of technometry. Okay, calculation of center of pressure again using bit of technometry. And finally, we uh, moved here. Understood? This is a nice question actually, which makes you understand every concept of hydrostatic forces. So I can't F H is from U V L. Is it right? Yeah, basically, yes. I think few of you have doubts in FH. Look, FH is nothing but rho F G area into H bar, correct? So, what is the distance of H bar? Actually, this is the centroid G here. Look, this total plate is projected to 0.6. So, this half will have a point 0.3 here. Yes or no? Means this centroid is at a vertical distance of 0 0.3 from this location. Can you understand this? Can you understand this here? This point is at a vertical height of 0 0.3 meters from this dotted line. Is that clear? To, till that point, is that clear to all of you? Yes? Yes or no? Everyone who told, uh, please explain hydrostatic force. Is this point clear to all of you? Yes. If this is point 0.3, this is point 0.4. So total, this, this point, sorry, this point centroid is at a depth of 0 0.7 from the free surface okay because this is 0 0.3 and this is 0 0.4 so total this is 0 0.7 that's it so that's why this calculation has a 0 0.7 for the h bar okay now you got all the values you see it involves a lot of mechanics principles okay moments uh, resolutions and all and again uh, fluid mechanics calculation of hydrostatic forces center of pressure but of course calculation of the center of pressure and hydrostatic force is not very easy because the plate and cable are inclined at some different angles and this dimensions is also something different actually okay now let us see you have all the equations so let us calculate f actually this implies f h so what is hydrostatic force 2229 i mean 2929.46 into a. So what is A? 0 0.3857. 0 0.3857 plus W cos theta. Weight is 300 newtons. 300 cos 41.81 degrees into this B. B is just 0 0.45. Directly we have seen B is 0 0.45 obviously. This complete value divided with 1 by sin alpha into C. So C is 0 0.9 into sin alpha. So what about alpha? We have calculated alpha here. Alpha is 68.375. So sin 68.375 degrees is equal to F, the force with which you have to pull the cable. That's it. Okay. So this implies F is equal to some newtons. What are the units they are asking? Newtons or kilonewtons? Let us see. Newtons. I want off to two decimal places. Fine. If it is asked in newtons, then you can calculate this using a calculator basically. So let us 
पंच दकीस पॉइंट थ्री एट फाइव सेवन इनटू ट्वेंटी नाइन टू नाइन पॉइंट फोर सिक्स टू नाइन टू नाइन पॉइंट फोर सिक्स ओके सो दिस वैल्यू प्लस थ्री हंड्रेड इनटू पॉइंट फोर फाइव इनटू इनटू कॉस फोर्टी वन पॉइंट एट वन फोर्टी वन पॉइंट एट वन कॉस ओके सो दिस इज़ द टोटल वैल्यू ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एंड थर्ट 0.9 into 68.375 sine, 68.375 sine of this angle. Okay, so 1470.81, 1470.81 newtons is the force we have to apply to. Yeah, 1470, roughly correct. 1470.7, 1470.8, whatever. Okay. Yeah, fourteen sixty-eight point three is also correct because uh, you know I, a lot of decimals and trigonometry is involved, so a range should be given definitely. Okay, so it's around fourteen seventy point eight one. Did you all understand and clearly went to this question because it's really an important question actually. Okay, so you can see we have talked about a lot of things when we are solving this question. Okay, and I'm telling you whenever you are solving questions on hydrostatic forces and also on buoyancy, especially these two questions. Means the questions from these two chapters involves a bit of trigonometric knowledge, not of very high level, but even some basic level. You see, for example, for calculation of this angle alpha, we have done certain theta, alpha, all these things. Okay. So like that, we can have a lot of things. Okay. So all these are good, nice uh, problems which we can deal. Okay. Do you need any more questions on hydrostatic forces, on plane surfaces? we can go to covered surfaces right because this single question has taught us a lot of things okay for homework i'll uh, give you okay yeah in test says yes okay so let's go to the covered surfaces okay so fine this question is good enough to make you understand all the concepts then let us see the covered surfaces part okay so this we have seen then covered surfaces Curved surfaces. Now, basically, how do you calculate the hydrostatic forces in curved surfaces? Okay, so let us suppose if you have a free surface of the fluid, for example, and let us suppose you have a curved surface, for example, say something like this. Okay, or maybe. So let us suppose there is a curved twisted plate, for example, something like this. Then clearly you can see. So let us suppose if there is some small area you have taken at A, and let us suppose if this is H actually, okay H for example at some height H, then let us suppose if you establish coordinate system, Fx, Fx, Fy, and let us take for example Fz in this direction. Okay, so three-dimensional coordinate system by default. Fx. F Y and F Z, for example, here. Okay. Now, obviously, the resultant will be acting at certain location. Okay. So let us suppose the resultant pressure acting D F is something like this, because it's obviously normal. It's acting on an area D A, obviously. Okay. Then, if you calculate again D F in the x direction. Okay. So D F X, D F Y, and D F Z, because this is D F. So if you use all this. Okay. And let us suppose. The angle made by this force with x-axis is alpha, with y-axis is beta, and with this z-axis is gamma. For example, okay. So let us suppose if the vector is making an angle x, I mean alpha, beta, and gamma with x, y, and z-axis respectively, then d f x can be written as d f cos alpha. Yes or no? Correct. Obviously, because in two dimensions, it's very simple. You can understand if Force F is making an angle alpha with x axis. F cos alpha is the resolution. Similarly, if D F is making an angle alpha beta gamma with x y z axis, D F cos alpha, D F cos beta, and D F cos gamma are the components. Okay, so D F y is equal to D F cos beta. Similarly, in D F z, this is D F cos gamma actually here. Okay, now what is D F? Obviously, D F is nothing but pressure at this location multiplied with D A. Correct. Yes or no? And what is pressure? Of obviously, again for the covered surface, one side it's atmosphere, one side it's fluid. Is what our assumption? Obviously. So if one side, if it is P atm, and 
it is also patm obviously okay then you know this df can be written as p into da where p can be written as p is gauge actually because atm and atm gets cancelled rho z h d a actually okay so if you replace here this is rho g h d a cos alpha rho g h d a cos beta and rho z h d a cos gamma actually can anyone tell me what are these terms d a cos alpha d a cos beta and d a cos gamma you might have studied in plus one or plus two or even in diploma when you are dealing 3d geometry you can easily get those things what are this d a cos alpha okay first let us talk about d a cos alpha what is d a cos alpha any idea this is vectors no actually so any idea what is d a cos alpha actually no fine i will ask you some easy question with which you can definitely answer this look let us take this triangle for example let us suppose you have a 3d surface like this okay so let us suppose if this is a a and let us suppose if this is alpha for example okay then if you take d a cos alpha let us suppose if this is thickness t for example i am explaining you with the help of a plane surface but this mathematical concept what i am telling you is valid for padha ho gaya nahi aaye theek hai okay fine i'll explain you what are the logic i am going to tell you now it's valid for any surface it's plane or curved or whatever because this is simply math okay if this is alpha now let us suppose if this thickness is a t for example okay if i let, let us suppose if this small area is making an angle alpha with x axis can anyone tell me this area is nothing but is nothing but j cos alpha yes or no because for example if i take this length l a is actually equal to l into t correct obviously length into t now if you have a cos alpha for example this is nothing but l cos alpha into t and into t obviously and l cos alpha is nothing but this length which you call for example x x into t so a cos alpha clearly and this alpha is the angle made with this plane correct so whenever you take a cos alpha it gives you the projection about this axis like for example if this alpha is the angle between this plate this plate made with the with, with x axis then a cos alpha gives you the area of the projection of this plate perpendicular to this axis matlab like let us suppose if this is the axis and this is the plane containing this then definitely the angle a cos alpha will give you the projection of this area onto a plane perpendicular to this axis understood like for example in a broad sense if you see look uh, will actually eliminate this diagram see ax cos alpha or ax which is actually dax or da cos alpha is actually this term is actually projection of da onto a plane perpendicular to x axis actually okay so this is projection of this plane perpendicular to x axis similarly this day daz are perpendicular to y and z axis obviously okay now try to understand one thing if you do integration obviously this o g is constant this h into dax means basically dfx integration is actually rho fg if you take this fluid density as constant for example rho fg into integral h into dax this gives you rho fg ax into hx bar actually okay so what or how you can uh, write this actually if you see let us suppose for example i have a cylindrical you know uh, let us suppose if i have certain cylindrical block for example okay so let us suppose if i have certain cylindrical block okay let us suppose if this is the case if this is the area and 
let us suppose for example if i take this as the x axis direction okay so this is the x axis direction then the hydrostatic force of acting on this area will be equal to if this is the x direction then obviously to this direction if you take a plate perpendicularly let us suppose if you take a plate very uh, you know inclined at some angle or if you take a plate which is perpendicular to this means if you take a plate which is perpendicular to this for example in the side view how you can see that in the side view you can see this as the plate like this yes or no so this is actually a plane which is perpendicular to just a minute guys i think uh, the diagram has to be done yes now you can see if you take a plane perpendicular to x axis the side view will look like this yes or no now let us suppose if this plate has some width for example means let us suppose if the plate is something like this okay it's a curved plate if you have a curved plate if you project this curved plate onto a plane let us actually this is the side view but my plane is actually like this because this is the plane which is perpendicular to this x axis if you project this curved plate onto this plane can anyone tell me what is the geometry i'll get can anyone tell me what is the geometry i'll get if i project this part onto a plane which is perpendicular to x axis then means basically if you project this onto a perpendicular plane can anyone tell me what is the geometry you'll get it will be a rectangle correct so obviously this will be a rectangle so if you project this we will actually end up with a rectangle so this is the projected part where in the side view you can see the width of the gate actually okay in the side view you can see the width also which you cannot see in this front view and this height is actually equal to the projected height okay and clearly you can understand one thing this area is nothing but ax of this rectangle okay and you can also see for example if this is the free surface of the fluid in general then let us suppose if this is the h bar for example as per this integration you can see h into dx gives you ax into hx bar so for this plane with respect to this free surface whatever is the h bar that you have here okay so because we have taken this as the free surface so this is your dimension of hx bar actually here in this case understood projection repeat kar dijiye yes because if you have a projected surface like this for example let us suppose if this is my palm and if you see the projection like this okay now let us suppose if you put a torch light here what is the projection you will see on a plane perpendicular to this axis let us suppose this is the horizontal plane what i have okay and let us suppose i am putting a torch like this and i am seeing the shadow on a plane which is perpendicular to this x axis okay so projection of this face will have a rectangular shaped shadow yes or no of course if i make my tips fingers straight correct so like that we have this okay so basically force acting in any particular direction is nothing but the specific weight of the fluid into area of projection of this curved surface onto a plane perpendicular to that particular direction okay into hx bar clear so therefore fx force acting on x direction is equal to rho fg into area of projection area of projection of curved surface onto a plane perpendicular to x axis multiplied with depth of centroid of projected area from free surface from free surface actually okay so this is from free surface clear did you all understand how to do the things okay as on here please type in the chat box clear now let us do this uh, in obviously similarly for fy fy and fz also now i want to tell something about this fz which is a bit special actually 
If you go for this projection, dA cos gamma, can you write this as rho f z into h into dA cos gamma is nothing but the projection of this area onto a plane perpendicular to z axis. That means definitely horizontal plane means if you see the top view, whatever is the area actually you have taken dA, same will be the dA here. Yes or no? This is the same dA what you see here. Correct? Yes or no? Like because if you project means DAZ actually, DAZ actually here, you can see if this is dA, the project this is the z axis. So obviously horizontal free surface is the plane perpendicular to this z axis. If you project this dA onto the top axis, you'll have dAZ. Can I say H into this dAZ is nothing but this volume of the fluid which is above this dA? Yes or no? H into dAZ is nothing but volume of the fluid above that dA. Can I say this? Which means this amount of thing H into dA cos alpha or dAZ is nothing but this gives you volume of fluid above dA. Volume of fluid above dA actually. Yes or no? Can I say that? H is nothing but height. DAZ is nothing but this cylinder. H into DAZ will form actually the volume of fluid in this cylinder, in this small cylinder actually. Can I do this? Yes. Now, if you perform integration, DFZ is equal to rho FZ into small elemental volume actually. Okay. Obviously, if you perform integration of the complete volume, you will get FZ is equal to rho FZ into Z actually here. Okay, so a total volume of fluid supported by area. Supported by area actually here. Okay, so that's how the total vertical force acting on this plate in the downward direction is nothing but weight of the fluid which is supported by this plate actually. Clear? So this is the physical intuition. Therefore, FZ is actually equal to this. And this complete things can be observed with the help of simple mathematical integrations. That's it. Okay. Because we have done directly in 3D, because you can see everything is visible, quite, you know, uh, intuitive. Okay. Clear? Now, this is what we have. So, O F Z into volume of fluid supported by the total uh, curved area part, actually. Okay. I hope it's clear to all of you. Yeah, all of you have understood it. Sir, question. Yeah, please, uh, Kalyani, you can always, you know, ask a question if you have. Right? It's clear. Then, you can understand. Similarly, you calculate the center of pressure and all accordingly, like how you do for plane surfaces in this case. Okay? Now, coming to, uh, you know, basically, let us suppose if you take a circular gate, for example. I just want to discuss a circular gate. In uh, You can actually do it for any gate, any curved gate. For circular, you have one speciality. I'll actually tell you now. See. Let us suppose for a circular gate, if you take for a circular gate, look, what we can do is, let us suppose for example, you have a circle like this, okay? So you have some, I, I am very bad artist actually, you know, but I will try to do something, okay? So. You can see. Okay, so let us see certain things here which could help us. Oh, sorry. This is the only part which I show is, yeah. Fine, okay, so let us suppose this is the gate actually, okay? So that's the gate. Now, see carefully, if this is the gate, if this is center O, for example, then tell me one thing, at every point, the surface, the fluid acting will be normal, yes or no? normal to the surface. The fluid will be acting at a normal to the surface. Can anyone tell me? Sir, so, enough hai. Kyun? 
लोड बहुत ज्यादा है क्या सिर्फ इस ये लास्ट पॉइंट है ओके इसके बाद मैं स्टॉप करता हूँ ठीक है देखिए सो इफ दिस इज द पॉइंट देन वी ऑल नो दैट द प्रेजर्स एक्टिंग विल बी नॉर्मल टू ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट ऑन दिस गेट एस ऑनो एट एवरी पॉइंट द प्रेजर फोर्स हाउ द हाइड्रोस्टैटिक फोर्स एक्टिंग विल बी नॉर्मल टू द प्लेट एंड कैन एनी वन टेल मी फॉर ए साइकिल लेट अस सपोज इफ आई टेक ए साइकिल लाइक दिस ओके सो लेट अस सपोज इफ आई टेक ए साइकिल लाइक दिस देन इफ दिस इज द टेंजेंट एट दिस पॉइंट कैन एनी वन टेल मी व्हाट इज नॉर्मल टू दिस टेंजेंट और नॉर्मल टू दैट पॉइंट Yeah, we'll see the curved surface area numerical also. But first of all, please tell me if this is point O, then can anyone tell me what is the normal to the circle at any point? Radius, correct? So this is radius, right? So that's actually radius. Okay. Now, if this is radius, that means can you feel one thing? If you replace the all projections by a single force, that force will definitely pass through the radius or center of this particular. Covered surface. Okay, so it actually should definitely pass through center. Actually, okay. So this is the net hydrostatic force which is acting, and this net hydrostatic force acting should pass through center because that's the normal actually center. Clear? In case of circular gates, always the resultant will actually pass through the center for any kind of gate. Actually, okay. This is one important uh, thing. Why this is important thing? I'll tell you. Let us solve one numerical. You will understand. Okay, only one numerical, small numerical. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So please solve this question. A six meters long quarter circular gate of radius three meters and of negligible weight is hinged about its top edge A. Okay. So this is a circular gate, obviously. So this is hinged about its top edge. The gate controls the flow of water over the ledge at B. So you can see there is over. A ledge at B. Ledge is basically this kind of uh, what do you say? Some uh, bolt you will keep, no? So that's kind of ledge actually. Ledge at B, where the gate is pressed by a spring. Obviously, to control this gate, what's happening? There is a spring like this. Okay, this ledge is actually like this. So this gate is inclined, uh, or this is a curved gate which is actually holding this. In actual case, what happens? This fluid will actually try to exert pressure on this gate. Yes or no? Means practically, if you see, but still all pressure will be same. No, pressures will not be same. Okay. Pressures will look. See, in this case, this pressures will not be same. Pressure will be increasing. That's why, depending on the pressure, this angle alpha will depend. Okay, this can be very close to this or very, you know, moving up or at any point. But definitely, one thing, this alpha will be definitely generally more than 45 degrees because as you go down, pressure increases and this resultant is inclined towards this edge as compared to this edge. Okay, so alpha generally will get more than 45 degrees. That's what we can say. Okay, Anjit. But you can never confirm that all these are equal. Obviously, it's not equal because as you go deeper, pressure increases. So pressure at this particular points will be large as compared to the top points. Okay. Now let us see. If you go for this question, then you have this A actually three meters, and obviously there's a spring. Physics. If you observe the physics, what happens here? Definitely through this center there will be certain amount of hydrostatic force, maybe like this. But it passes through center. Okay. So there is a hydrostatic force which actually acts. This hydrostatic force will exert some moment about this point A, and obviously this will try to rotate the gate. It will try to open the gate. So in order to close this gate, what you are doing? You are actually putting a spring. So whenever this gate tries to get displaced, the spring will actually try to push it back, and it will close the gate. Okay. So is the physics clear? We'll see the math. But is the physics clear actually? Okay. So is the physics clear? What's happening here? Now. Let us see mathematically what happens. Look, I'll solve this question in two ways, which uh, in both the ways you can understand. You'll you'll get the same solution, but we will actually see the other way to calculate the center of pressure in curved surfaces. Okay. So anyway, let us see here. Look, if this is F, can I resolve this as F H into F V? Obviously, can I do this? Yes or no? Can I resolve this force F? Means let us suppose if I draw the free body diagram of the gate, for example, the gate is actually like this, and you have your hydrostatic pressure acting something like this. Yes, hydrostatic force. This is the center, for example. Okay. Then can I resolve this as F H and also F V? 
can i do this and if this is the point hinge we have a reaction in the x direction and also a reaction in the y direction clearly and obviously this is the spring so you have the spring force f is equal to kx obviously they have given you the spring constant if the spring plus the spring force acting on the gate okay they are asking directly spring force fine f spring actually okay so this is f spring actually if you want to solve this question as it is it's very simple because under these forces the gate should be in equilibrium about this point a yes or no correct under the influence of these forces this gate should be in equilibrium about this point a correct so if you write summation of moments about point a maybe you can take the counter clockwise sense as positive this is zero so clearly this rx ry vertical force will pass through this point a yes or no i am repeating this rx ry and this fv are passing through this moment center so they don't generate any moment so this is for example radius r you can clearly see this fh will try to open the gate in this anti clock direction so this fh about this point fh into r should be same as f due to spring into r obviously okay so if you simplify this force exerted by the spring is same as nothing but the hydrostatic force acting in the horizontal direction okay and we all know for calculating in the horizontal direction what you will do take a area i mean take a plane and project this obviously projection of a quarter cycle will become a rectangle this becomes a rectangle actually okay and this is width w and this is the radius obviously okay so this is the radius and you know clearly if this is radius this is at r by 2 centroid is at r by 2 r by 2 this is g of course okay so if this is g then fh is actually equal to rho fg into area of the projected surface what is the area of projected surface r into w into this depth of centroid which is r by 2 that's it okay so rho fg r square w by 2 is the total spring force which is also same as the hydrostatic force acting in the horizontal direction actually okay so rho fg r square w by 2 so this implies now what is the density of the fluid so what is the fluid actually it's controlling water okay so water so 1000 into g 9.81 into radius square so 6 meters long quadratic gate means basically width is 6 6 meters because width long length is 6 meters and the gate controls the flow of water of radius 3 meters okay so this is 3 so 9 square 3 square 9 into width is 6 divided by Two actually, okay. So two can cancel this three times maybe. So twenty-seven into in kilonewtons, okay. So if you want this in kilonewtons, ten cube gets cancelled, and we have kilonewton obviously. And you can see three nines are twenty-seven. Twenty-seven into nine point eight one. So twenty-seven into nine point eight one gives you two sixty-four point eight seven. Eight seven kilonewtons. That's it. Okay, yeah, two sixty four point eight seven kilonewtons is the spring force which is trying to push this gate and keep it in equilibrium. clear to all of you okay now let us calculate the center of pressure i'll show you some simple calculation to see the center of pressure actually okay so nice question right yeah basically it's a nice question i'll do this same question in a other way to so that you can identify what is center of pressure and you will see you'll get the same answer for example if you miss this small logic of resolution of forces for example then you have to do a very big question to solve this okay like for example let us suppose if instead of resolving this because you know this force can be shifted at any along any uh, point along its line of action and here you can see this fv we are making one component to pass through this r now you can understand one thing if you don't resolve this as fv and fh then calculating this question is not very easy for you okay look i'll tell you because in that case you can calculate the center of pressure also so anyway the correct answer is 264.87 you know uh, three decimals maybe one more decimal if you want okay this is exactly two decimals so 870 directly 264.87 is the exact answer directly okay now let us see how we can do this question in another way it's a lengthy way actually okay so let us suppose if this is the gate actually and you have the spring force f spring and let us suppose you have the force f which is passing through the center 
Maybe like this, okay? So this is F, clearly. FH, you anyhow know. So what is FH actually? FH is 264.87, you have calculated. FY means in the vertical direction or FV, you can say FV. Look, try to understand one thing. So exam may kiss gate say question ban sakte. Uh, it's not Lamis actually, you can uh, see what happens here. This is ADS R, this is also of ADS R actually. And in this F, you can understand one thing, if this is 264.87 and FY, FY is nothing but normally have the free water surface here. So if you just want magnitude, you know this FY actually acts in the upward direction, okay? This FY actually acts in the upward direction in this case. If you want to calculate the magnitude of this FY, what equivalently you can do is, for the same plate, for the same plate actually here, for the same plate, you can see if this is filled with water at atmosphere, if this part is filled with water at atmosphere, the weight of this particular fluid supported by, I mean, actually the diagram is not very accurate, highly. Just a minute. So let us see if this is the gate. So the weight of the fluid supported by this, matching this atmospheric, same free water surface, this is the free water surface the weight exerted by the fluid in this direction in the vertical uh, i mean in the vertical direction is same as equal to the magnitude of weight of this part of the fluid actually okay so hypothetically we can do this like for example in any case let us suppose if you have a surface if you have a fluid here for example if this is the free surface for example okay then this magnitude of the force acting on the surface is equivalent to the magnitude of the force acted upon by this liquid if this is atmosphere and if the other side is fluid okay so mathematically they give you the same values actually means having fluid here and having atmosphere here is same as having atmosphere here and having fluid here but the main thing is you should match the free surfaces like for example let us suppose if this is a closed container and if the free surface is at a pressure p naught then what you have to do you should construct some extra column like this where this h is equal to p naught by rho z in that case that's it okay so like this we can analyze the things if we can do this then the weight of this particular fluid is nothing but if this side is r this is also r f v can be written as magnitude of f v is can be written as density of the fluid into g into thickness width of the plate into this shaded area so what is that shaded area r square minus pi by 4 r square actually this is the area of this shaded part because this total is a square from the square you subtract the sector area which is pi by 4 r square it is quarter of a quarter of a uh, circle actually so pi by 4 r square if you do this calculation you will get rho f z w r square into 1 minus pi by 4 actually and what about this calculation rho f z w r square by 2 correct now try to understand one thing if this is all into f h and also Fy actually. Can I get this angle alpha? Yes or no? Like alpha is equal to tan inverse Fv by Fh. That's it. So if you do this, tan inverse of, if you divide Fv and Fh, this O, Fz, W, R square, all these things will go 1 minus pi by 4 by 2 actually. So you can get what is alpha. This is a constant actually. Okay. So 1 minus pi by 4 by 2, pi by 4. Okay, so subtract this from 1 divided by 2. Okay, so tan inverse. So 6 point, oh sorry, did I make some calculation mistake? 1 minus pi by 4, so pi by 4, subtract this from 1 and divide by 2. Okay, so then degrees, tan inverse. Okay, so 6.124 degrees. So 6.124 degrees. You see clearly this is very low inclined like this. Okay, so this surface is, this F is actually very low inclined. Obviously, as you go down, pressure increases. So this angle if you take from this particular location, it will be 6 degrees, very small in general, okay? So 6.14. If you can get this, then obviously you can calculate this coordinates of the point, okay? So this point coordinates is nothing but R cos alpha, 
comma r sin alpha. So if you want to calculate the location of center of pressure, then radius is actually how much? Radius is uh, three meters. Okay, so radius is three. So three cos alpha. Okay, so three cos alpha is basically if you save this angle, so recollect cos alpha into three. So two point nine eight two eight, two point nine eight two eight, comma r sin alpha. Obviously, okay. So sin into three. Okay, so point three two. So this is the location of the point where the complete hydrostatic force is acting actually. Okay. Did you understand how to calculate the center of pressures and all in this case? Okay. Fine. So actually in this case, if you don't resolve this as FH and FV here, calculating, resolving this at this location FY and I mean this is FH and this is FY, then you have to calculate this length and this length by finding angles and all and then you have to apply the equilibrium okay but as per transmissibility of force you can shift the force at any point in the line of action and definitely if you split it here exactly at this point if you resolve this fy passes to horizon i mean that moment center and questions become very easy actually in this case okay so this is what you have if you know slight basics then the question gets solved with simple like this okay and i'm telling you one thing in gate examination as your if as much as strong is your concept, the size of the solution will be less. Okay. As your conceptual knowledge increases, the size of the solution keeps coming down in gate exam. Okay. So I think we have already, you know, overpassed the time. So what we'll do, we'll stop here for this day. And I have left some questions of Bionzi. We'll see Bionzi in uh, tomorrow's class. So basically we have seen complete details of hydrostatic forces and some problems in today's class. Okay. Hydrostatic forces plus, uh, you know, few problems is what we have seen in this case okay and thank you so finally if you feel to get in touch with me you can join here okay so that's what any doubts did you all understand this hydrostatic forces in a nice way so tomorrow we'll spend some time on buoyancy and also some mathematical part which is kinematics okay so thank you all. I hope you all enjoyed and liked this uh, session. So thank you. Okay, we'll meet tomorrow at again 7.30 a.m. and we will discuss the things. Okay, we'll continue. Yeah, thank you all. Take care. Bye.